Okay, this is a joint meeting of the Special Committee on Bay Delta and the Water Planning and Stewardship Committee. Roger Patterson is going to start us off. Welcome, Roger. Uh, thank you, Chair Peterson. Uh, good morning, uh, board members and uh, members of the public. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to kind of lay, uh, lay the foundation for the process that we have all uh, worked together on to construct for consideration of this project. And I thought, uh, Connor and I were talking, we're going to cover a little bit of the background here for those of us that have been working on this for some period of time. So, um, as you know, we, uh, uh, working with the board members, staff has developed this process where we will prepare a series of white papers. Uh, we will make presentations at board uh, and committee meetings on those and have an opportunity for uh, questions and discussion. Uh, we uh, currently have uh, planned a workshop uh, in uh, August uh, where we will try to bring the pieces all together. We're going to prepare a board letter and try to integrate the three white papers that we are preparing and, and set the stage for that, uh, for that workshop. And then uh, uh, we're looking at September uh, for board action, uh, all of this subject to uh, uh, the, the year desires on how you want to run the uh, schedule uh, by term determination of the chair. Uh, so the three white papers uh, that we've identified, uh, the first one is the physical project or the infrastructure. That's the one that we have provided to the board and will be the subject of the presentation that we are planning to make today. Uh, the second one, which will be presented in two weeks, uh, is the plan will cover the operational water supply and science aspects of the project. So it's, it's going to be a pretty meaty paper and a pretty meaty subject. And then the final paper will be finance and cost allocation for the project. And that one we're looking at doing, uh, doing at, the, uh, August, at the August board meeting. So the focus today will be on the infrastructure paper. Uh, John Bernarski is going to uh, is going to make that presentation. A little bit of context, though, I thought I would run through. Uh, for those of you that were on the board uh, in 2007 when this process started, which was 2006, but in 2007 our board spent a considerable amount of time uh, uh, basically putting together the guiding principles that the board wanted us as staff to be using as we were engaged in the multiple discussions that we were having. So th this was the framework uh, that was provided by the board. Uh, since 2007, uh, we've uh, tried to keep our eye on these policy principles. Other things have come up during board discussions that we've also tried to adhere to, such as uh, uh, cost follow water. So when we're thinking about benefit, we think about benefit and cost going together. Uh, also, the everybody should pay the same idea. I've talked about that many times to the committee that, that we are looking at, uh, from our standpoint, a, a no subsidy, a no subsidy between various sectors in the project. So those are the, uh, uh, those are the uh, criteria that we have had in our mind, and as we get to the board letter, we'll try to, to evaluate how we see the project stacking up against those. Uh, in the way of history, uh, just you know, this has been a, a, uh, an ongoing uh, discussion about what to do in the Delta, particularly with Delta conveyance, for, for many decades. Uh, back, uh, I, I, was looking, uh, I was looking yesterday, and it was in 1919 when the USGS did, did an evaluation of the water supplies in the state of California and first put forth the notion of the long-term need to move water from north to south, from where the water is to where the water was needed. Uh, in 1931, it's a really, really comprehensive report. It was called the State Water Plan at that time. Uh, at that time, they had a state engineer, which was the head of the Division of Water Resources, uh, and his name was Edward Hyatt, and he was the state engineer. He, pre he prepared the 1931 state water, state water Plan, which was then submitted to the California legislature, and they considered that report when they, in 1933, uh, enacted the uh, Central Valley Act. So that was the plan the legislature endorsed. The first segment of that was immediately put, 100, I think it was a $170 million bond issue was put on the ballot for a statewide ballot. Uh, it passed uh, to initiate the project, but it was 1933. It was in the midst of the Great Depression, and they couldn't sell the bonds. So the federal government was brought in. Uh, to assist the state of California in, in starting to develop the infrastructure. 
And in shortly, shortly thereafter, the Bureau of Reclamation initiated what is now the Central Valley Project, uh, starting with the Contra Costa facilities uh, in the Delta into Contra Costa County. Uh, Shasta is the cornerstone of that project. That was finished in, I think, 1945, uh, is the major reservoir. Um, so uh, as we got into the 1950s, uh, the state of California felt that they were ready to take on the next phase of the project. So in 1960, that's when the legislature passed the Burns Porter Act. And that was the authorization for uh, the state water project. And the bond uh, for $1.75 billion was put on a statewide ballot. It barely passed. It was 174,000 votes that it passed by out of 5.8 million. So it, it, was, it was a very close call. There was one county in Northern California that voted yes, and that happened to be Butte County, which is the site of Orville Dam. Uh, so it was tight, so it's always been contentious. It's, n it's no surprise that this uh, continues to be contentious. It has been, it has been for a long time. Uh, the need for Delta conveyance specifically actually uh, was included and recognized in the 1933 Central Valley Act. That was the first time that it was recognized. Uh, and then, since then, there have been several attempts to move forward uh, with Delta conveyance. Probably the most, uh, the most well known would be the battle in the early 1980s over the Peripheral Canal and the rejection of the project at that time by the voters in, 19, in 1982. Uh, in the mid-90s, um, there were a lot of things continuing to move, and so there was another effort uh, to bring together the various agencies and stakeholders to, uh, to take a look at what we needed to do. We struck what's called the Bay Delta Accord in December of 94. I was working at the Department of Interior at the time and created the CalFed process. And we were trying to do three things at the time. One, we're dedicating more water to the Delta. So specifically Delta outflow, that was done in the Bay Delta Accord. Uh, two, CalFed, which was the relevant state and federal agencies were brought together to do the planning on what do we do about Delta conveyance and storage needs. And then three was a commitment to start funding some non-flow things for fish. And that was called category three because it was the third category. Uh, we've talked to the board about Metropolitan's involvement in that and most recently the work that was completed at Butte Creek and the success that we've had there. So that was in the mid-90s leading up to about, about 2000 when the record of decision on CalFed was signed. Uh, the last effort, the one we're in the, the, the middle of or the tail end of or somewhere with right now is the Bay Delta Conservation Plan slash California Water Fix. So that started in 2006 when we signed a planning agreement uh, with the various uh, state and federal agencies, fish agencies and operating agencies, DWR and Bureau Reclamation. Uh, several of stakeholders also signed on to the planning agreement and that was initiated roughly uh, 11 years ago. Uh, the um, uh, situation hasn't improved uh, uh, in the Delta while we've done all of this work and planning and it's been hard work and people have worked with sincere intentions to try to address the problems no matter where you come from. I will say that, at least that's been my experience. We still have, we still have significant risks to the Delta and to water supplies, uh, particularly those that we are interested in at Metropolitan, and we've talked about these many times, the fishery conflicts, the subsidence that we continue to experience, uh, seismic risks, which have been looked at by various experts, and now, <laughs> most recently, a lot of emphasis on sea level rise. So those are also in the back of our mind as we look at what do we need to see as far as performance uh, for a project consistent with the policy principles we've laid out. Uh, you've seen this bar chart before. This is uh, simply a, a, a representation of the combined water supplies that we've seen uh, exported for the state project and the CVP together. Uh, and the various things that have occurred. I'd say particularly passage of the Federal uh, Central Valley Project Improvement Act in 1992. I mentioned the Bay Delta Accord. In 1994, there have been some sub subsequent actions, the most recent uh, associated with the biological opinions in 2008, 2009 uh, that were issued by the federal fishery agencies. Uh, what does it look like in the future? You know, we're not sure. 
Uh, we get a lot of these questions, and, and this, uh, the state actually did, I think, a very good paper on uh, how is what we're doing now the same and how is it different from the peripheral canal, because in essence, it's trying to achieve many of the same things. Uh, one, it's underground as opposed to uh, being above ground. That's a major, that's a major change. Uh, the other thing is the size. Uh, the size uh, of the diversion we're looking at now is about 40% of what was looked at, looked at back in the, in the early 1980s. Uh, and then the, you know, we know a lot more about science, we know a lot more about adaptive management and the need to restore the delta. So I'm going to turn this over to John, uh, John Bernarski. The focus today for the, the infrastructure, the uh, hard infrastructure that we want to talk about is what is it, is this constructible based on our evaluation and experiences Metropolitan has had? Can we manage the risks that are associated with, and how would we go about doing that? How would we assess what those risks are? And how do we make sure this can be constructed in a way that will protect Metropolitan's interest? Uh, thank you.